Back to the looking glass. That's kind of the way it feels sometimes. Uh, Alice in Wonderland type stuff, right? The Mad Hatter, all that. An 80-year-old woman and 35-year YMCA member is being accused of discrimination. Why? 80 years old, been at the Y for 35 years. Discrimination, why? Because she protested the fact that a man was using the same shower as she was. Julie Jammon says she was showering after using the swimming pool when she heard a low voice in the locker area. She says she saw a man in a woman's swimsuit outside her shower stall occupying the same space as little girls who were preparing for their own swim time. Jammon says she told him to get out, and when he refused, also told the aquatics manager to remove him from the area. Instead, she was told to leave and that she was discriminating and not allowed to come back to the pool because he's walking around with his junk hanging out. The aquatics manager has stated that the person in question identifies as a woman as a Y employee. Jamin has since reported the incident to the police and appeared before the city council to protest the incident. Indecent exposure is what you used to call this. Joining us live to comment on this story, the host of Just the News, Amanda Head, who spent time with me in Dallas this past weekend at CPAC. Amanda, good to see you again. Good to see you, Steve. You know, you and I over the weekend were reminiscing about our first time on air together, and I think that was about three years ago, and I never would have imagined that three years after that, you and I would be on air talking about men's junk. I just just didn't see that coming. You know, as, it's about as polite as I can put it. I mean, here is a man in a woman's swimsuit parading around in front of little girls, and somebody thinks this is okay. I don't think this is okay. This is not no. normal. This is borderline. I mean, if he's around these little kids, it's borderline pedophilia. I, I, am am yes. I wrong? No. And, and you know, for this woman, like like you cited, she's 80 years old. She's been on this earth for eight decades. She's probably seen a lot in her time. But her concern was for these young girls who were pulling down their one-piece swimsuits to go to the potty. And they were doing this in front of an intact male, a guy with junk, in that locker room. And she she called out to him. She said, do you have a penis? And he said, it's none of your damn business. And as it turns out, This man works at the YMCA. And Steve, I just think back to pre-2015 when you had Obergefell v. Hodges that was that was making its way through the federal court system. And and so many people said, you guys are bigots. We just want to be accepted. That's all we want. We don't want anything more than that. And we all we as conservatives. We always get made fun of for talking about slippery slopes. It didn't even take a decade, Steve. That was 2015. That was seven years ago when Obergefell v. Hodges was decided. And here we are. We don't just accept them. Now it's being forced down our throats. And now we have to agree with it and allow intact males into female locker rooms. It's absolutely All right, so it's, it's, horrible. it's going to get worse. Because I'm going I'm to share a term that maybe a lot of our viewers are not yet aware of that's becoming part of the conversation out in these fringe sexualizing areas. The term is minor attracted person, MAP, which is the new term for pedophile. And the MAP crowd, whatever that crowd is, now wants to be included in the LGBTQ, uh, add all your letters, plus, plus, plus. Minor attracted people because pedophile has a bad connotation to it. So we must call them minor attracted people now. I will not. A pedophile is a pedophile, an illegal alien. That's the legal term from the U.S. government. I will use legal, accurate terms in this program. So help me God. Your thoughts. And I've got a lot of gay friends. There's a group called Gays Against Grooming. And it's a group that stands against minor attracted uh, persons being included, and, and and these are, by the way, also people who didn't want transgenders to be a part of LGB, now TQ plus whatever. Uh, but it's it's sad and it's pathetic. But you have this group of people, and I will just point out that South Park has and always has been uh, way ahead of its time because they were talking about Nambla. I think the Nambla episode was about 15 years ago, North American man, boy, love association. Look it up. It's a real thing. Yeah. And they made fun of it on South park. And now here we are. Yeah. And, and it's been around that, uh, organization, um, 
Is the word pervert, is, is, is that still, you know, a legal term? I just throw it out there. We'll consider Yeah, we're probably not allowed to use that. But, you know, I was at, when we were at CPAC, I was talking to a gentleman who is a reporter in Ireland, and he was talking about what is happening in America culturally. And he was uh, talking about how the reason that America is just being bombarded by all of these Marxist ideologies, these Saul Alinsky type changes these progressive Soros backed ideas into our, you know, infiltrating our government and our culture. And he said, it's because if American culture falls, if the American West, if American conservatives cease fighting, that's it for the rest of the world. They know that they don't even have to worry about the other countries. If they can just bring down the United States, then that's it. Yeah. Well, pervert, that's your word of the day. I want to go with it. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go with it. Yeah. All right. Look it up. Write it down. Uh, it's a good conversation. We have to stop um, tolerating and start demonstrating common sense again. That's what we need to have. Amanda, good to see you as always. Uh, you can catch Amanda, 6 o'clock weekdays here on America's Voice Live uh, with Just the News, Not Noise, with that man, John Solomon. By the way, two brand new programs will debut tonight.